Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and today I'd like to talk to you about potential energy. Our objectives for today are going to be, first off, to define potential energy, to state alternative definitions of conservative force, and describe examples of conservative and non-conservative forces. Finally, we'll utilize the relationship between force and potential energy to find forces and potential energy functions. So let's start off by defining potential energy. Potential energy, given the symbol U in this course, is energy due to an object's position or state of being. Examples are things like gravitational potential energy, mu sub g, elastic potential energy, mu sub s, chemical potential energy, electric potential energy, and even nuclear potential energy. So let's start off by looking at gravitational potential energy. Let's assume that we have a mass at some position, we'll call up the positive y direction, and in order to lift that mass up to a different height, whatever path it happens to take, as it comes to this new height, this new distance, we've had to do work on it. Well, what work did we have to do? The work done is going to be the integral from some arbitrary level we're going to call y equals zero, a relative zero, all the way up to some final y position, which we'll call h, its height, times the force vector dotted with dr, our definition of work. So that will be the integral from y equals zero to h of mg dy. The force we have to overcome in lifting that mass is its weight, mg. Mass and the acceleration due to gravity, as long as we're right near the surface of the Earth, we can consider that acceleration due to gravity fairly constant. We can pull those out of the integral sign as constants, and the work then becomes mg integral from 0 to h of dy, or the work done is equal to mgh. Now the work we did on that object, raising it to that new height, has to go somewhere. Where did that go? That became the object's potential energy, or mu sub g. So the potential energy of an object, as long as it's in a constant, uh, constant gravitational field, is mgh, where h is a relative height distance, a relative uh, change in delta y. And as long as you set your potential energy function to zero at that base level, then all of this becomes relative and you have a nice simple function for the potential energy due to gravity. Now, there's a little bit more to the story, but that'll get us going to begin with. Let's talk about conservative forces now. You can define a conservative force in a couple different ways. A force in which the work done on an object is independent of the path taken is known as a conservative force or a force in which the work done moving along a closed path is zero. If you come back to the exact same point you started at, a closed path, and the net work done is zero, must have been a conservative force. Or it's a force in which the work done is direct, directly related to a negative change in potential energy. Really what we're saying is we're talking about forces where the energy is, I shouldn't say lost because energy is never lost, where the energy is able to be recaptured, where the energy is maintained without things such as friction or air resistance or drag. So examples of forces. Conservative forces are things such as gravity, elastic forces, coulombic forces, the electrical forces between charges, while non-conservative forces, things like friction, drag, and air resistance. So let's talk about the work done by a conservative force. We're talking about the work done by a conservative force. What we're really talking about is the change in potential energy. The work done on one has to go somewhere. It becomes the change in potential energy. Do work on an object, you give it energy. If work is done on that object, it gives up its energy. So we could say that delta U is equal to the opposite of the work done by the conservative force, or that's the integral from position one to position two of F dotted with dr, just like we talked about as we were calculating uh, delta U equals mgh for something in a, in a uh, constant potential gravitational field. Let's take a look and apply this to gravitational potential energy in a non-uniform gravitational field. We can start off with Newton's law of universal gravitation. Force of gravity is equal to minus gm1 m2 over r squared 
in the direction of the vector between the two objects we're talking about. The negative sign just means it's an attractive force along that vector. Well, if we start there, then the change in potential energy is equal to the opposite of the work done by our conservative force, or in this case, the opposite of the work done by gravity, which will be the opposite of the integral from infinity to some position r. Why do we start at infinity? We're going to define the potential energy due to gravity as zero when you're infinitely far away from all other objects. That's the only real zero point that makes sense. Up to some position r, and that's going to then have our gravi universal gravitation function minus g m1 m2 over r squared dr. Therefore, we can say that the gravitational potential energy must be equal to, well, capital G, mass 1 and mass 2 are all constants. Those can come out of the integral sign, g m1 m2 integral from infinity to some position r of dr over r squared. Or if I write that as r to the negative second, it becomes a little easier for me to integrate. Write that again. Potential energy due to gravity is equal to g m1 m2, our constants, and the integral of r to the negative second is just going to be 1 over r evaluated from infinity to r, which, as it turns out, equals minus g m1 m2 over r. So there's our potential energy function due to a non-uniform gravitational field, pulling that right from our definition of work in conservative forces. Could also look at this sort of thing for elastic potential energy. If the force due to a spring, for example, is equal to negative kx, then the work done is going to be equal to the opposite, the potential energy change, which in this case is going to be minus the integral from some equilibrium position zero to some final position x of our force dotted with dr, or the opposite of the integral from zero to x of our force by Hooke's law minus kx dx. Negative signs become a positive. Therefore, we can say that the potential energy due to the spring is going to be the integral from zero to x of kx. k is also a constant. That comes out of the integral. And I get kx squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to x, which happens to be 1 half kx squared, the potential energy stored in a spring or elastic band. Let's take a look at how we can get force from potential energy then. If we imagine we have some small displacement dl, and we're talking about an object moving along this white path under some, the influence of some conservative force F, then the differential of potential energy, the small piece of potential energy that corresponds to this small force, du, is going to be the opposite of the small work done by the conservative force, or minus F dot dl. And if we're taking the component of F in the direction of dl, we could write that as f cosine theta. So that's minus f cos theta dl. Or we can call this f cos theta just f in the direction of l. When we do that, then, we can start to define this differential of u as equal to the opposite of f cos theta dl or du equals minus fl dl. From there, it's just a little bit of algebraic rearrangement to say that the component of force along that direction, L, in the direction of DL, is just going to be minus du DL. The force is equal to the opposite of the derivative of the potential energy function along that path. You can find the component of the force from the potential energy function. A very, very useful formula that's going to cause us to understand quite a few different relationships here. We can get the gravitational force from potential energy due to gravity, just like we went the other way a few minutes ago to find the potential energy from the gravitational force. How do we do that? 
Well, let's take a look. If the force, the component of the force along that path L is minus du dl, and our gravitational potential energy function is ug, that's equal to minus g m1 m2 over r. All right, so then our force along that path r is just going to be minus d over dr, our path r of negative g m1 m2 over r, the derivative of our potential energy function due to gravity. G m1 m2, all constants can come out, so that becomes G m1 m2, and the derivative with respect to r of, I'm going to write 1 over r as r to the negative 1. Therefore, that force becomes G m1 m2, the derivative of r to the negative 1 is negative r to the negative 2. So that becomes minus G m1 m2 over r squared. There's the component of the force due to gravitational potential energy. Ha, ah, that looks awfully familiar. Newton's law of universal gravitation, the component of it, and if I want the vector form, I would just write that the force is going to be equal to minus g m1 m2 over r squared in the direction of r hat. So we can go from potential energy to force and from force back to potential energy. We can even do the same thing with Hooke's law. Here we have a graph of potential energy versus exposition for an object that's oscillating with the spring. Kinetic energy here, potential energy down below the curve, and we have a constant total energy. Because it's a conservative force, we're not dissipating energy from this system. How do we go about then finding the force from the potential energy function? Well, again, delta u, no, let's start this way. The potential energy in a spring we know is 1 half kx squared. So using the formula that minus du dl equals the force in the direction of that l, the derivative of u with respect to x we're going to get minus d over dx of our 1 half kx squared. The derivative of 1 half kx squared with respect to x, gonna find out that f for the spring is minus kx. There's Hooke's law. We've gone the other direction. All right, that should get you started with potential energy, conservative forces, and the relationship between forces and potential energy. If you need more help or are looking for more assistance, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks very much, and make it a great day.